Okay, let's get started. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Jia Ming from City University of Hong Kong, and I'm here to present our work on mixture of experts. The system is called LENA. It is a joint work by City University of Hong Kong, Chinese University of Hong Kong, and excellent researchers Yi Ming and Yi Bo. Uh, so I will first go through some backgrounds on mixture of experts, that is MOE. Um, it is an ensemble model paradigm comprised of several experts and a gating network assigning weights of each expert output. The figure here is a simple illustration of MOE architecture. So in the sparsely activated MOE, each input selects only a few of experts for processing instead of compute over the complete graph. The benefit of sparsity is that the computation flops remain constant even when we increase the number of experts, that is, increase the number, uh, scale of the models. Eventually, we can create a very large model with massive model parameters, but we, uh, we have a very low computation cost. So MOE has, sh has shown great potential in NLP tasks using transformer models. Uh, GLAM is an MOE model family proposed by Google. Uh, it is said that uh, it shows that GLAM can outperform GPT-3 on 29 language tasks. Uh, and De DeepSpeed also introduced their own MOE models, achieving the same quality uh, with uh, dense models, but only using one-fifth of the computation cost. Therefore, in Lina, we put our focus on MOE using, using transformer-based language models. So the common practice here is that we replace the original feedforward layer in the transformer block architecture with MOE layers. And one MOE layer consists of a gating network and several experts. Each expert is a feedforward network. All the experts have the same architecture but different parameters. As for the gating network, it is a trainable matrix to compute the probability of each data sample to each expert so that it can dispatch the data sample to the most suitable experts. To achieve sparsity, a top two gating is used in training and the inference adopts top one gating. That is to say, each data sample only selects two experts over all the experts in the training stage and only select one expert over all the experts in the training in the inference stage. Uh, one thing we want to note here is that during the training, there is a load balancing loss added to the training loss to encourage an even dis data distribution among experts. Uh, this loss is deactivated during the inference stage. So as we all know, transformer models uh, tend to be very large and it is inevitable to use distributed systems to achieve efficient training and inference. When we adopt distributed systems for MOE, there is another parallelism in evolved called expert parallelism. We show how distributed MOE works. So each device would host one unique expert and the rep, uh, we will replicate the non-expert models on each device. This is the conventional data parallelism. So this creates the hybrid parallelism with both expert and data. However, this kind of practice incurs additional communication costs because the data sample on one device could be routed by the gating network to the expert on another device. The communication primitive here is called all to all. So in the first all to all, we need to send the tokens or the data samples to the correct experts. And the second one, we need to restore the data back. We will later elaborate on why we need a second all to all here. Um, there is a unique thing about transformer-based MOE is that the data transfer size in both auto operations are the same because of the architecture of the MOE network. The, uh, uh, the, expert F, uh, the expert network has the same input size and output size. So however, distributed uh, MOE is not efficient. We have run some experiments on different scale of MOE models and different architecture. Auto actually takes a average of 34% 30, uh, of the step time, with, which is quite significant. We try to analyze why auto becomes the performance bottleneck in MOE. So to achieve this, we, we first show a simple example of how MOE works in the transformer-based language models. This also will explain why we need a second auto. Suppose we have a transformer block here with an attention layer and a MOE layer with four experts. The key is that the data granularity operated by the two layers are different. The attention layer operates on the complete sequence, while experts operates on one single token. 
So consider we have a sequence, ATC is good. The output of the attention would be dissembled into tokens and fed into the gating network to compute the most suitable expert for computation. Then, after the expert computation, it has to restore it into the original sequence with the correct order so that it can be processed by the attention layer in the next transformer block. Therefore, the key takeaway here is that to restore to a sequence, we must wait for the processing of all the tokens in one sequence. Uh, that makes, uh, makes the second L2 necessary to do the restoration process. So this feature has made all 2 become a performance bottleneck because it has to be in, uh, asynchronous and uh, blocking operation. The data transfer of this operation is also very large. Um, we here show a profiled uh, GPU timeline. You can see that the all 2 communication blocks the computation of uh, uh, the expert and the final combined operation. And during the all 2 communication, there is no computation. The GPU utilization is mostly idle with a very low utilization. Um, besides, when the number of ex experts increases, uh, that is, the model size increases, the ratio of auto running time also increases. This makes, um, this is one of the key reasons that distributed training, uh, distributed MOE is inefficient. However, we were wondering if this is the only cause of making auto being the performance bottleneck. So to verify this, we try to evaluate MOE training and inference separately. We find that they actually have their own unique, unique problems. For MOE training, it involves a backward pass, which does not exist in uh, MOE inference. Um, but the inference is purely, um, sorry, um, the inference is purely workload driven. Therefore, there is no load balancing loss involved to put on any constraints on the gate, uh, expert selection. We now elaborate on these two problems. So in training, we have the backward pass, and therefore there are two communication operations involved in the data and expert hybrid parallelism. Or reduce is used to ag aggregate non-expert gradients, and auto is used to exchange token gradients to compute uh, expert gradients. From the timeline provided here, we find that when these two operations overlap, they share the resources, including GPU, SMs, and the network bandwidth. Both O2O and O-Reduce would be prolonged due to the resource sharing. And the slowdown of O2O communication actually directly lengthens the training step time because it is a blocking operation. More importantly, we find that the slowdown factor actually varies and cannot be determined because of the black box nature of the GPUs. The medium slowdown we measured is two times, but can be four times at maximum. So as for the MOE inference, the key difference is that there is no load balancing loss posed during the inference uh, stage. There, therefore, the expert popularity is purely data-driven. Empirically, we find that the expert popularity would be much more biased compared to the blue bars in these figures indicating the training stage. There are a few uh, experts being ex extremely popular and processing more tokens. So in the current deployment decision, the devices hosting the unpopular experts have to wait for those with popular experts to finish their processing. And in this 16 expert MOE model experiment, we found that the device hosting the least popular expert have a maximum idle time of 29% of the inference time, which indicates large room for improvement in latency. So now we have more understanding on MOE training and inference. Um, we propose our dedicated design choices for both parts. In the training stage, our intuition is that we always prioritize O2 and avoid network bandwidth sharing. This way, the blocking period incurred by O2 could be minimized. For this example, the optimal solution would be like let O2O preempt the running or reduce operation and reserve all the bandwidth for tra data transmission. And all reduce can utilize the rest of the time left by O2O op operations to transmit its gradients. However, um, the challenge here um, the challenge here is that the nickel communication primitives cannot be preempted easily. And moreover, there is no control knob inside the operations to adjust how, they, how the resource sharing can be done 
among the GPU operations. So to overcome this challenge, we propose to use tensor partitioning to control the operations in finer granularity, that is micro-OPs. So by partitioning the uh, all this into micro-OPs, we could always prioritize O2O whenever it is ready and let all this or micro-OP execute whenever the network is idle. We can see that the blocking period in, is restored to the minimum O2O uh, running time when we try to prioritize the O2O and avoid network uh, uh, sharing. We find that with uh, tensor partitioning, we can further reduce the MOE layer running time. So we can actually, uh, we can actually uh, partition the O2O operations as well into micro OPs and enable pipelining between the expert computation and the O2O communication. Um, please check out our papers for more details on how we try to maximize the pipelining efficiency. Um, now let's move on to the inference part. Um, so recall that we show the inference, uh, MOE inference has a more biased expert popularity distribution. Uh, the question is then how to deal with imbalanced device load. Our idea is quite simple. To deal with uh, this kind of imbalanced computation load, we allocate more resources that, uh, to, the GP, uh, to the experts uh, that are popular and pack those unpopular ones. However, we find that the popular experts in each layer actually varies and the expert selection of each token cannot be determined before the computation, uh, gating network computation of that token is finished. Although it is feasible to conduct resource scheduling after the gating network, that, but this kind of practice is not efficient and incurs large overhead to change the resource allocation of experts and destination of each token while the compu uh, model computation is fully stopped. So our question here then becomes how to design a low overhead resource allocation scheduler. Our finding proves to be useful in achieving low overhead scheduling. Now, that is to say, there exists certain pattern in tokens expert selection. Uh, similar tokens naturally tend to process by uh, natural, uh, tend to be processed by the same or similar experts in each layer. We try to profile the expert selection of tokens during the training stage and find that the tokens that made the same expert selection choices in the previous layers are likely to select the same expert again in the future layers, showing in this figure. So this kind of uh, tokens actually counts to about half of the data set. And we then consider using this kind of pattern to, uh, to estimate the expert pro popularity in this inference stage. So our idea works like this. We start uh, we start collecting the expert selection results during training after the load balancing loss is minimized. We consider for each expert selection pass, that is the tokens that select the exactly same experts in the previous L layers. Uh, for the example here, uh, we show here is the L is, three, uh, is two and we trace back three layers. So for each possible pass, we collect their expert, selection, uh, expert decision in the proceeding layer, that is layer I plus one. And we can then obtain the expert popularity in the layer I plus one in the training stage. Since we want to know what is the popular experts, we only, uh, we only retrieve the top K expert popularity and view others as unpopular ones for this pass. So now we can get the, prof, uh, the, the expert popularity distribution in the training stage and use this for estimation of inference, uh, inference stage. Um, relying on this profile distribution, we conduct a two-phase scheduling. So in the phase one, we, rely, uh, we use the uh, profile distribution and con consider all the tokens in the inference batch. Based on the tokens expert selection in the previous layers during inference, we can then conduct resource scheduling in advance. We compute the resource for each uh, expert. Ideally, it should be proportionally to its popularity. In this approach, phase one can be pipelined with model computation because we can always predict the layer of uh, the expert popularity of layer I when we are still computing for the resulting layer I, I minus one. So, 
the phase one uh, resource can scheduling can be completed before the actual computation of the uh, upcoming MOE layer. In the phase two, we compare the actual routing decision with the estimation results. Um, if the estimation results match it, matches with the routing, actual routing decision, then the, uh, we, actually, uh, we achieve a, very, a nearly zero overhead resource scheduling decision. In the worst case where the results significantly deviate, significantly deviates from the, significantly deviates from the estimation results, we, recomp we will recompute the resource allocation based on the actual routing decision and the perform resource ad adjustment. So we have covered most of the Linux details uh, and we will show some evaluation results. Um, our test bed has four nodes and each has four A100 GPUs with 40 gigabyte me uh, GPU memory. And we convert each of the uh, feed forward layer in the transformer block to MOE layers. And we evaluate Lina with three training models and two inference models. Uh, it covers both encoder, decoder, and encoder decoder models. Um, we first show the training step time speed up over baseline. Uh, the baseline is the deep speed implementation. And we try to evaluate Lina with different design choices. By gradually, uh, by gradually enabling the components in uh, design components in Linux scheduler, we find that the priority scheduling with micro OP partitioning, that is the green, uh, that is uh, the the orange bar here, can actually improve the tra training efficiency significantly, at least 1.3 times in the 16 expert MOE models. Uh, furthermore, pipelining expert computation with O2O communication can. Uh, I can increase the efficiency by about five to 10%. We also present the running time of uh, MOE layers. So the first two figures are the speed up of, of uh, MOE layer in its forward and backward stage. And the third one is the uh, um, auto running time speed up. The average speed up of MOE backward path is 2.2 times. This is consistent with our measurement of the slowdown factor of the auto or running time in the backward pass. Then move on to the inference latency. Uh, we, can, uh, we measure both the medium latency and 95 percentile tail latency. We, get, we compare linear state design choices with baseline and IDEO. IDEO is the performance measured when we have the prior knowledge of exact expert popularity and can conduct zero overhead, perfect, perfect resource allocation in, in advance. We can see that the full version Lina with both the first phase estimation and second phase fine tuning, uh, Lina can achieve a similar performance as ideal results. This indicates that Lina's resource, schedule, uh, resource allocation actually balance the load among devices in the cluster. Uh, the same observation can be obtained when we try to measure the MOE layer running time in the inference side. So for the mo uh, both models we evaluate, Linux MOE running, layer running time is close to ideal as well as for the o O2R communication time in the selected layers shown here. Uh, we have more evaluation details in our paper. You can check it out. Um, so we summarize our contributions as follows. Uh, we present a thorough analysis of the reason that O2O being the performance bottleneck in the dis distributed MOE training and inference systems. We then introduce Lina, a system ac uh, that accelerates both training and inference tasks. Um, yeah, I think this wraps up my presentation. Thanks for your listening. <laughs>